2023 FCS football season ended almost two months ago, and it was once again North Dakota State crowned as champions. Wait, you said what? They weren't? It's a state below North Dakota? That's right, South Dakota State won the FCS championship game against Montana this year, and also won last year against North Dakota State, with both games not being very close. SDSU is the top dog in the FCS football world, but this didn't just happen overnight. For this video, I want to take you back through the years of frustration for a team that can never get over the hump until they finally did. We go back to 2012, where I like to think the foundation started to take shape for the SDSU teams that we know of today. Back in 2010 and 2011, under head coach John Stiegelmeyer, the Jackrabbits had underwhelming records of 5 and 6 both years, which seemed to halt their progress from the years 2005 to 2009. In 2012, a flip was switched because SDSU went 8 and 4, making the playoffs after a two year hiatus, and beat Eastern Illinois in the first round, then lost to NDSU in the second round. Even with the loss, this was a great stepping stone for a team as key pieces were still intact, with the likes of quarterback Austin Sumners and running back Zach Zenner only being sophomores. Two starting DBs and Andrew Brown and Winston Wright returning, RC Kilgore, a linebacker primed for a breakout, and young D lineman ready to step up. Unfortunately, that defense that I just hyped up did not perform the best compared to the 2012 season. The defense gave up about 600 more rush yards, 400 more pass yards over the year, as well as letting opposing offenses score 24 points a game. Still, even with the defense dropping in production, the Jackrabbits finished the season 8-4 with the help of Zach Zenner's 144 rushing yards a game. SDSU made the playoffs and won in the first round against Northern Arizona, but lost in the second round against Eastern Washington. This season did not start on the best foot for the Jackrabbits because senior starting quarterback Austin Sumner broke bones in his foot game one against FBS Missouri, which sidelined him for seven games after the Missouri one. The team lost against Missouri and proceeded to go 5-2 and two in the next seven games, all of this with sophomore QB Zach Lujan under center. Zenner in those seven games at least provided some offensive stability and ran for 1,137 yards and having 10 touchdowns. The game Sumner came back was against NDSU, and SDSU lost that game, so now they sat at 5-4. and four. With just three conference games left, it looked bleak, but SDSU won three straight to set themselves in a playoff spot once again. This time, their first-round matchup was against Montana State, and South Dakota State won a thriller 47-40 by barely recovering an onside kick to seal the game. Next game, against North Dakota State. The game went into halftime tied at 14 apiece, then went into the fourth quarter tied at 17. A Sumner touchdown to Jake Whittakey with three minutes left, but the Jackrabbits up four, making the score 24-20 in the Fargo Dome. Then two men named Carson Wentz and RJ Erzendowski put a stop to the upset with a last-minute touchdown to have the Bison win 27-24, a quite successful season for Stiegelmeyer and the group, especially since they were on the verge of a 500 record. Now, with another year over, this meant graduations, and this year hit hard for the offense because Sumner, Zenner, receiver Jason Schneider, O.M. and Nick Purcell, Andrew Moeller, and Trevor Greger all graduated. With the defense not seeing much turnover and younger players getting experience, this Jackrabbit team held opponents to only 17 points a game. South Dakota State even beat an FBS school this year. <laughs> only, it was Kansas, and this is when everybody was beating Kansas. Yet SDSU went 8-3 and three again during the regular season and played a first round game against Montana. This year, the Montana team got the better as the Grizz won 24 to 17. SDSU was actually down 24 to zero at half, and they mounted a decent comeback. Wuhan and freshman Taryn Christian split starts during the year as Wuhan went down with an injury against NDSU, but he returned later in the season against South Dakota. So an interesting quarterback battle for the next year in 2016 as both QBs put up similar stats and equal starts, as well as two young emerging offensive weapons and wide receiver Jake Wineke and tight end Dallas Goddard, both sophomores and both named to Missouri Valley Conference all first team. Christian did eventually beat out Wuhan in the quarterback battle and he did not disappoint. In 13 games Christian started, he threw for 3,714 yards, 30 touchdowns and completing 64% of his passes, as well as rushing for 335 yards with 6 touchdowns. This earned a Missouri Valley first team all-conference and offensive player of the year. Goddard and Winneke had a combined receiving stats of 2,609 yards with 27 touchdowns. That's insane how they made up 90% of Terrence passing touchdowns. The Jackrabbit team also finally beat NDSU in the regular season, beating them 19-17. All this sounds good, but SDSU finished again 8-3 in the regular season, 
The Jackrabbits beat Villanova in the first playoff game 10-7, then had to face NDSU, where this time NDSU beat them 36-10 in Fargo. Let's just say if you like offensive football, 2017 South Dakota State was your team. The offense put up 37 points a game, rushing for 2,400 yards and throwing for 3,600 yards. Taron once again had a crazy season. Even though his completion percentage dropped and interceptions were up, he was still great in both passing and run game. Goddard, Winnicky, Jordan Brown, and Christian Roseboom all made Missouri Valley Conference first team, with four players making second team. In the regular season, SDSU went 9-2 and beat North Dakota State once again. First playoff matchup was Northern Iowa, and they beat them 37-22. to With that win, it became SDSU's very first season with 10 wins or more, and it only took 120 years. Second matchup, New Hampshire came to Brookings and lost 56-14 to to the Jackrabbits. SDSU now made it to their first FCS semifinal, and had traveled James Madison. This game did not go well, as they lost 51-16. to With a season finish, South Dakota State lost a lot of players on offense. Running back Jacob Mangiarelli, O-lineman Charlie Harmon, and Jacob Unsorgi, record-setting receiver Jake Winnicky, and tight end Dallas Goddard, who became SDSU's first player drafted since 2010. Remember when I said SDSU scored 37 a game in 2017? Yeah. They scored 42 a game this year. Tyron Christian and Pierre Strong Jr. dazzled the offense with linebackers Dalton Cox and Christian Roseboom leading the defense. After the first game against Iowa State got canceled, the Jackrabbits went 8-2 in the regular season. Their first matchup in the playoff was against Duquesne, where the Jackrabbits won 51-6. Second round, they beat Kennesaw State 27-17, setting up a semifinal game against North Dakota State. Again in their semifinal game, it wasn't very close. SDSU lost 21-44, to the eventual playoff winners. Big losses from graduation included safeties Mackay Slade and Brandon Schneider, along with linebacker Dalton Cox, as well as probably SDSU's greatest quarterback of all time, and Taron Christian. All eyes were on the key position in football, the quarterback. The offense stood strong with running backs Pierre Strong and Mikey Daniel, who had rushed for a combined 1,500 yards and 15 touchdowns. It just seemed the offense had a new starting quarterback every week. To start the year, sophomore Jabor Gibbs was under center against FBS Minnesota, where he almost led them to an upset win. Then the next two games, because of a hand injury to Gibbs, junior Kanan Nelson was starter and won both. Then weeks four through seven, Gibbs came back as starter, leading the Jackrabbits to four straight wins. But in a highly anticipated game against NDSU, Gibbs tore his ACL and SDSU lost 23-16. In the last four games with freshman Keaton Heidi, SDSU went 2-2, two and two, ending with a record of 8-4. The first matchup in the playoff was against a team they upset two weeks prior in Northern Iowa. South Dakota State lost this rematch 13-10. Defensive anchors Christian Roseboom and Ryan Arith graduated. Quarter line pieces Evan Greenway and Matt Clark also graduated. Well, a little something happened in 2020. So spring football it is. Remember Jabor Gibbs and Keaton Heidi from last year? Yeah. Both took a back seat to freshman Mark Gronowski. In the nine games Gronowski started, he had 1,500 passing yards with 15 touchdowns, three picks, along with 570 rushing yards. The three-headed Russian attack of Isaiah Davis, Pierre Strong, and Gronowski had combined 2,000 yards with 20 touchdowns. SDSU went 8-1 and one in their regular season and ended as the one seed in the playoffs. Wins in the playoff against Holy Cross and Southern Illinois set them for a semifinal game against Delaware in Brookings. This semifinal, however, the Jackrabbits won 33-3, finally getting to play in their first championship game ever against Sam Houston State. At half, SDSU was down 14-7, and to note in this game, Keaton Heidi, the backup, had to play as Gronowski tore his knee four plays into the game. But with all that, the Jackrabbits took the lead after a Davis run in the fourth to put the Jackrabbits at 21-17 with five minutes and about 40 seconds left. Into Sam Houston territory, breaks another tackle down the sideline. The race is on. They won't get him. That final drive for Sam Houston was just magical, though. Converted two fourth downs in Jackrabbit territory, then for them to throw the game winning touchdown with just 16 seconds left. The throw fires over the middle, and it is caught. Three impactful players, all defensive players that I could tell from research, took a COVID year, with that being Xavier Ward, Michael Griffin II, and Logan Backhaus. So almost the exact same team from the spring of 2021 was back for the fall of 2021. Season started off great with a win against FBS Colorado State, but four games later, an overtime loss to Southern Illinois put a damper on the season. In the regular season, SDSU also lost to Northern Iowa and South Dakota. 
but they did beat North Dakota State. South Dakota State came in the playoffs unranked, but won three games in a row to make another semifinal, this time against Montana State. This time there's no shot at championship as Jack Rapids lost 31-17. Graduate transfer Chris Oladokun stepped in as Gronowski was still sidelined with his ACL injury and had a great one season. Pierce Strong rushed for 1,600 yards, while sophomore tight end Tucker Kraft was starting to shine and two of SDSU's starting linebackers, Adam Brock and Logan Backhaus, earned first-team all-conference. Pierre Strong also became the second player drafted to the NFL since 2010. I remember watching this first game against Iowa, and it made me want to get an hour of my life back. SDSU lost this game to Iowa 3-7. 0-1, not the best start to the season, but the Jackrabbits won the next five to become 5-1. Next up, NDSU at Fargo. SDSU kicked a field goal to take the lead 23-21 with three minutes left. However, NDSU was driving down the field to the 50. Then the Jackrabbit defense managed to put an end to the drive and have the Bisons turn over on downs. South Dakota State won. The Jackrabbits won their last four regular season games to finish 10-1 and got the one seed in the playoffs. Delaware didn't stand a chance. Holy Cross didn't stand a chance. Montana State didn't stand a chance. And wouldn't you know it. The Jackrabbits were back in the title game against FCS powerhouse North Dakota State. Isaiah Davis and Mark Gronowski had great seasons on offense, with Reese Swinkleman, Caleb Sanders, and Jason Freeman holding down the defense. Yet, just like in the spring of 2021, the number one Jackrabbits had to prove on the biggest stage why they were the one seed. And they proved a lot, to say the least. South Dakota State won easily, 45-21, against the big bad boy on the block. This became SDSU's very first football title and a storybook ending for head coach John Stiegelmeyer, who retired after this game. After all the trials and tribulations from 26 years of coaching, he finally got the big one. Now with Stiegelmeyer gone, the Jackrabbits promoted defense coordinator and linebackers coach Jimmy Rogers to head coach. Tucker Craft also got drafted in the spring of 2023, making it three players for SDSU since 2010. Now, this Jack Rabbits team may be the most dominant FCS team of all time. They passed for 3,333 yards. They also rushed for 3,400 yards. They got 19 interceptions and only threw five. And the Jack Rabbit defense had 29 sacks while they only gave up 11. South Dakota State went 11-0 in the regular season and really only had two close games. In the playoffs, they beat Mercer, Villanova, and Albany meeting the Grizz in the championship game. The first half was a snooze fest, but the Jackrabbits led 7-3. Then in the second half, they shut out the Grizz and put up another 16 points of their own, winning the championship 23-3 and going back-to-back. Back. Mark Gronowski and Isaiah Davis got Missouri Valley Conference co-offense players of the year. SDSU had eight first-team all-conference players and had eight second-team all-conference players. To see how this little brother team to NDSU finally stepped up out of the shadow and took down Big Bro, it's kind of special to see. As a guy from North Dakota, I knew in 2022 the Bison didn't stand a chance in the championship. That's how dominant these South Dakota State teams have been. I'm happy for another team to step up as the new powerhouse of the FCS, especially since it's in this region of the United States. If you want to land, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell notification. Thank you.